Hey dudes, it's Mr. Post, and on tonight's video, the goal is for you to be able to explain how water can self-ionize and act like a weak acid and a weak base at the same exact time. So what are we looking at for H2O in order to be an acid and a base? There's a little checklist going on here. Hey, is it, is it an acid? Does it contribute H+. Is it a base? Does it contribute OH-? And lastly, does it ionize? Does it dissociate? Does it break apart? We have three checklists here that water needs to have in order to make it considered an acid or a base. Now, water has its unique property in that it's a substance that can act as both an acid and a base, which is really cool, at the same time. You get that? It's going to be an acid and a base at the same time, and we term those substances amphoteric. So if you look at I have two water molecules over here on the left side. Now, let's say one of them dissociates or one of them ionizes. In order to ionize, I'm going to remove this H plus away from the molecule. And when I do so, I am left now with an OH positive. So what you're seeing happening here, guys, is H plus is going to leave and I'm going to be left with an H plus and now an OH minus. And I have dissociated. So this could be considered an acid because it donated H plus into the solution. Now this substance over here could do the same thing actually. It could lose its H plus also. But let's just say it doesn't do that because not every water molecule does that. Only a few water molecules will undergo dissociation. Once again, it's considered a weak acid, meaning it does not dissociate completely. Well, if that's the case, where does that H plus go? Well, before we get there, I do want to throw another definition out there. Let's put another definition of acids and bases on the table. Now, up until this point, we said that this first bullet is true. Any substance that donates an, a proton to a solution is considered an acid. Now, that was Arrhenius' definition of an acid, but it's also Bronsted Lowry's definition of an acid as well. Now, Arrhenius said that any substance is a base if it adds OHs to a solution. Now, the Bronsted Lowry definition of the acid actually expands that. And not only is it going to be an OH, it says that any substance that actually accepts that donated proton would be a base. And so if we now look at water being a proton donor and also a proton acceptor, we can understand it being an acid to base even a little bit better. couple characteristics I need you to consider about water. Okay, water is crazy polar. When I mean crazy polar, I mean one side of water is positive, the other side negative. And you're going to see this here. Hydrogen is so unique in this molecule. Hydrogen has one electron, and that one electron is right now shared right there. So if you're actually viewing this molecule from this direction, what you're going to see is on this side is nothing but hydrogen's nucleus because it really does not have an electron cloud. So if it doesn't have an electron cloud because this one electron is located right there, what we have now is this unique situation where the back side of this molecule is totally positive. There's not even an ounce of negativity back here. It is totally positive because you have pure protons on the hydrogen. Now on the oxygen, oxygen is also the second most electronegative element and therefore it is very very attractive of hydrogen shared electrons right here. Oxygen also has these two unshared pairs of electrons. What does this give you? It gives you a back side of this molecule that is loaded with negative charges. So what do we have here? The result is a highly polar molecule and a very unique molecule of that. Now, water will dissociate, or a better term is ionize. And when water ionizes, it's going to split 
into H plus and OH minus. So if you picture H2O being HOH, we're having a little split here. The H separates and the OH separates. So look at this, dudes. I got myself an acid and I got myself a base as well. So yes, water can be an acid and a base at the same exact time, and they'll always neutrally, neutralize each other out and form water back again. And now, my pictures are just for painting pictures for those of you who need pictures, but I do want you to know that not every single water molecule does this. Some of them do it, but not all of them. It does not happen frequency, frequently, which is why it's considered a weak acid or a weak base. Now, we also use this term autoionization. Now, auto means self. So it's self-ionizing, meaning water just does this. Nothing causes it to happen. It does it. It auto-ionizes. It breaks apart and ionizes into H plus and OH minus. But I do want to remind you, not every water molecule does this. It does it by itself, though. Now, what ends up happening is that you have now produced this dude right here. And that guy is a highly positive H plus proton, and there's no electrons there. So I'm going to just draw like a crazy plus right here, because that's what's going on. I've already identified that this side of the water, water molecule is plus, and this side is negative. So what we have here is a highly polar water molecule. And the second this thing goes into solution, you know what? The plus is not going to stay around for a long time at all virtually instantaneously it is going to be bonded to the back side of this water molecule and that's what we see over here on the right hand side we have produced something new and what we produced is a hydronium ion that's right it's a hydronium ion it's h3o plus now you might often hear us say acids donate an h plus but what we're really saying is acids donate an h plus to form H3O positive. And so when you see the pH is the negative log of the H plus ion, really, dudes, what we're saying is this is H3O plus as an ion. So in step two here, step one being the dissociation of water, step two being the hydronium ion being produced, there is actually a third step here. And the third and final step deals with the hydroxide ion. Because if you recall, H2O did the split. And I should have an OH negative chilling out, and I do. So it's floating around in the water along with the hydronium and along with the water molecules. What ends up happening is that my hydroxide ion is step number three is going to react or bond together with my hydro uh, hydronium ion. And what happens is that we're going to have this reaction take place where my hydroxide is going to react with my hydronium. And they're going to produce you know it, dudes. Water. But check out the number of H's I have here. I have 1H, 2, 3, 4. I have 4 H's. And on this side, on the right-hand side, I only have 1, 2. That's because when these guys react, they produce two molecules of H2O. So what do we have here? We have this crazy reaction going on where water will ionize to produce an acid and it'll ionize to produce a base, and those two will neutralize each other out and produce two H2O molecules. And the reaction I'm going to have is this. Two water molecules can produce a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. And likewise, it's a reversible reaction. The arrows show and there's an equilibrium. Forward and backward arrows mean there's an equilibrium that's going to be achieved here. Where hydroxide and hydronium will react together and form backwards reaction back to H2O. It is a back and forth, kind of like a swing set. One side goes up, one side goes down, one side goes up, one side goes down. That's what we're looking at here. 
All right, dudes. So the goal of this video was for you to be able to see that water can act as both an acid and a base, and it does so by donating an H+, and also by producing an OH-.